This is a surreal experience. My game is only rendering, uh, well, actually below 30 frames per second in this particular scene, but my monitor is showing me almost 100 frames per second. And it's weird because it almost looks good. <laughs> now, if you feed multi-frame generation a higher base frame rate, I think it's excellent. I'm extremely impressed with multi-frame generation, but I wanna highlight initially here that it's not a great way to go from a low base frame rate to a high base frame rate, because do you guys see the artifacting going on with like the HUD elements and things like this? Now, I should keep in mind that what you see on your display is not what I see on my display, because even if you have a high refresh rate, variable refresh rate display, like I do, uh, your YouTube video you're watching right now is locked to a fixed 60 frames per second, and I'm seeing a variable uh, higher frame rate. Right, so these aren't gonna line up. So I'll describe what I'm seeing and you'll be able to see something kind of like what I'm seeing, but not really the same. That's just how YouTube videos are gonna be with this stuff. Anyway, so we can see that the HUD elements and things like that have some issues. If I move quickly, other things kind of break up. But what's surprising to me is that I actually, after turning it on and off again a whole bunch of times, um, even if I had a base frame rate of about 30 FPS, I think I prefer the increased motion smoothness of turning on multi-frame generation uh, to playing with it turned off despite the artifacting that we get. Uh, because while certain elements are fairly obvious, it's surprisingly reasonable. <laughs> but keep in mind that it's not making the game more responsive. So if you look at the top left side of the screen, you'll in addition to the frames per second, the 1% lows below that, you'll see PCL, that's PC latency. That's like the uh, input responsiveness between uh, like, like an input to the PC and when it would actually uh, sh be sent to the display, basically. And you can see that it's over 70 milliseconds of input latency. This feels a little bit floaty. But the thing is, even if I turn off frame gen, um, it's still not a great uh, responsiveness because we are at a low base frame rate anyway. And I actually think aiming and things like that, despite feeling a bit floaty with this turned on, uh, I think the increased fluidity actually helps my tracking. Now again, there's some other issues that I think we can highlight here. Do you see these rectangle targeting reticle? Let me see if I can get that to, that to pop back up. Uh, when it goes over the bushes here, let me maybe pop out. Uh, when, the, when the targeting reticle goes over these bushes, you can see a little bit more breakup around the edges of it, things like that. And also, if I maybe scope in with something like this, you can see the stuff underneath this red circle is certainly not updating at the uh, same refresh rate, or at least not with the same quality as the stuff that is not underneath the red circle. So there's definitely some issues here. So if we're clear, uh, this is not raw performance. It is not making the game more responsive, although the increased fluidity might help some tracking on my aiming. That's honestly how I'm feeling about it. Um, and But this is nothing like what an actual 100 plus frames per second uh, would be like for gaming. That doesn't mean it's not interesting. But in reality, you should have a higher base frame rate before you turn this on. Now, how was I even getting a low base frame rate on a 5090? Because I'm, I was playing the game at 4K with path tracing on without any resolution scaling. And that's hard even for a 5090. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn on some resolution scaling. And another side note, the transformer model for upscaling, which has been updated from the old CNN model, I, uh, and also ray reconstruction has been updated. These are looking great. I used to hesitate to use performance mode upscaling in Cyberpunk prior to this update. With this update, I'm perfectly happy with the performance mode upscaling. And when I do that, my base frame rate is now gonna shoot up to a, a much higher frame rate. And now it's then gonna multiply it by four. <laughs> so if you look at the frame rate counter now, once we let that settle in, I'm getting over 280 frames per second on my display. Now dividing that by four is actually how many frames are being rendered. But the responsiveness now, the PC latency, is down in the mid 30 millisecond range, which feels very responsive. My mouse does not feel floaty to me. If I was playing a competitive shooter or something like that, I probably wouldn't use this for the slight latency hit. But you'll also notice that the image quality artifacts are much less noticeable. Like that 40 meter exclamation point, those kinds of HUD elements that was breaking up on the low frame rate, is now looking much better because uh, there's more rendered frames uh, for it to actually work with. And the little bit of fuzziness under the tar targeting reticle 
uncertain, difficult elements are still there. Uh, and especially on the red circle, it can be somewhat noticeable uh, around the edges of it. So this is still not perfect. But coming from the higher base frame rate means that there's smaller differences between the two real frames, which means that the quality of the generated frames are much better. So in other words, this is a great, like kind of a win more button. Um, I used to play, uh, you know, uh, card games where sometimes a card would be considered, well, it's a win more card. It doesn't help you win. It just helps you win more if you're already winning. And I think that's still the best way to interpret uh, frame generation, which is, it's best at its best when you already have a decent frame rate. So why would you want it then? It's absolutely amazing for high refresh rate displays. I'm on a 240 Hertz 4K monitor and it's really hard to fill up 240 Hertz without frame generation. And with the older frame generation, which is a equivalent to the 2X mode, although the image quality has been upgraded um, by a switch to AI uh, motion, uh, sorry, uh, optical flow and things like that. So this actually still looks better than the older 2X mode that we had on the 40 series. But switching to this, uh, you can see that my frame rate is now, well, still fairly high. I'm over 150, 160, but it's by no means taking full advantage of my 4K 240 Hertz display. Once again, just a reminder that what you're seeing on your screen is not a high refresh rate. You are seeing a 60 Hertz YouTube video. So I'm describing things. You're gonna see something a bit different than what I am. Anyway, um, so here's the thing. Why do we want the multi-frame generation? Well, essentially, um, if you're coming from base frame rate of around 60 FPS, the old version could get you to around 120, which is great. And if you have a 120 Hertz monitor, that might be just about right. Uh, if you now have a refresh rate, uh, you know, higher refresh rate monitor, you can now go into 3X or 4X mode. Like here we can see that 3X mode uh, gets me over 200 frames per second, but notably it keeps me under 240. And that's actually what I want. Uh, when I've been playing Cyberpunk, because I've played it for several hours, experimenting with all of these different settings to bring you my thoughts in this video, this is what I actually settled on as the best way to play with a, with a 5090 in Cyberpunk on a 240 Hertz 4K display. Because the issue with going into 4X mode is that you actually go beyond 240 Hertz. So unless you have a 4K display that actually goes to like 300 Hertz, I'm not sure those even exist yet. 240 is I think the highest I've seen. Uh, we're going above the monitor's refresh rate, which means actually the motion smoothness that I'm seeing in person on my display is worse now than when I'm in the 3X mode because um, the G-Sync has, has more trouble smoothing out the frame pacing if it's above what my monitor can actually display. So, so far I've been going with um, performance mode, super resolution, uh, which like I said, I think with the new transformer model and ray reconstruction looks great with the 3X and now I'm taking advantage of my um, display. Now let's think about how this is gonna scale down to uh, lower end cards in the 50 series because you know, you're know you probably not gonna be on a 4K display if you're on like a 5070 or something like that, right? Or, or maybe even a 5060, those haven't been officially announced yet, but they're, you know, we all know they're probably coming. So the, uh, the thought would be, again, I think multi-frame generation is best for high refresh rate displays. It's best if you already have 50 to 60 FPS, so times two mode would push you to around 100 uh, to 120 on a, a display that's around that. Uh, times three mode could push you into like 150 to 200, uh, uh, 150 to 180-ish range, which could be really good for somebody with a uh, you know 165 to 180 hertz uh, monitor, which is a common um, common option. And then the times four mode can take you know 50 to 60 frames per second up to about 200 to 240. So it's a great way of uh, taking advantage of those higher refresh rate displays. Um, and if you have an even higher refresh rate display, like 360 hertz, something like that, again, you could just adjust settings to get your actual rendered frames about right to then scale up from there. So really I see multi-frame generation not as raw performance and I don't like Nvidia putting it in their performance bar graphs. But what I do see it as is an extremely nice feature uh, for people with uh, extremely high refresh rate displays. So if you're on a 200, 300, 400, 500 hertz display, um, I think it's, uh, it's really nice to have the option to do the additional frame generation. I think it's very, very usable from a, a decent base frame rate. I think the image quality is quite good. Although again, it's not perfect. I still see something weird happening under my red, red targeting circle here. I still see little bits of weirdness going on with these HUD elements. 
and I still um, am not getting an increase to my responsiveness. But if the responsiveness of the game was already good enough and I have a high refresh rate display and I'm playing a single player game, I think this is quite good. Um, again, still wouldn't use it in multiplayer games where I already have a high base frame rate because it doesn't increase the game's responsiveness. It even has a slight uh, latency penalty compared to being off. Uh, again, the thing that really surprised me, um, and I had to test this out multiple times and try to be honest with myself, was the fact that when I'm coming from a low base frame rate, this wasn't unusable. It's not good. Let me be clear. This isn't good. This is not a great experience. This feels kind of floaty and there's way more image quality artifacts, but compared to just playing at a raw 30 to, uh, to below 30 FPS range, I do think the motion fluidity um, is somewhat preferable uh, even for aiming because it helps with the, um, like I said, with tracking just being a little bit smoother. So overall, very impressed by the new frame generation model, even in the times two mode, very impressed with the new upscaling model, uh, with the transformer version, very impressed with the new ray reconstruction model. Um, and multi-frame generation, I think has its uses, even if its best one isn't upscaling from 30, uh, you know, frame generating from 30 FPS. Still highly recommend trying to get to at least 50 to 60 FPS before kicking it on. That's hopefully good uh, information to get you guys kind of started on this stuff. I'm sure other channels, or maybe even myself, once we have more time, uh, will get a lot more detailed side-by-sides and try to capture footage at 50% speed and whatnot. But do keep in mind when you're watching all of that, um, uh, that it's not the same thing as um, what you actually experience in person on a high refresh rate display. Because I've got to say, actually just playing the game and turning it on and turning it off, um, I think I'd rather turn it on than turn it off. So it's a good technology. Just don't try to call it raw performance in a bar graph. <laughs> anyway, hope you guys have an excellent day.